Reaction mechanism 12 highlights another reversal mechanism. That is, we're going to reverse reaction mechanism 5. So kind of something to highlight with this uh, reaction mechanism is sometimes you might not know exactly what you need to do, or we need to think about looking at hidden functional groups. So what do I mean by that? Right? We don't necessarily think of it as a hemiacetal, like we have here as being a functional group, right? We learned about alcohols and aldehydes, but a hemiacetal is, uh, again, looking for something. We have to find carbon atoms that have either uh, um, OR groups and OH groups attached to either um, uh, another hydrogen or uh, an, another alkyl group. You know, if we have another alkyl group, it's going to be a hemiketal. If it's another hydrogen, we're going to have a hemiacetal. But again, why these are important is these hemi compounds are really one step away from having a reactive functional group. So remember, just kind of big picture, when we talked about forming hemiacetals or hemiketals, that was the way to cyclize sugars and literally protect either the aldehyde or the ketone functional group that was present there. So sort of reversing this means we're actually making accessible that aldehyde or ketone functional groups. So again, this is going to be really important when we understand and study carbohydrate chemistry. All right, so moving on to the mechanism, I'm going to show the mechanism um, you know, as it's, as it's uh, correct, and then kind of highlight you know, uh, something to think about in terms of protonation states. So with every mechanism that we do, I try to have some other little flavor of something that we sort of learn about. So mechanism's pretty straightforward. Hemiacetal here. What we want to have now is our alcohol be a good leaving group. So we need to protonate it. Anytime you want to have something leave, we can protonate it, make it a good leaving group, or at least a better leaving group. Now in this case, we talked about this in our last mechanism, we're not going to see um, SN2 attack by water here. Um, we're not going to see um, you know, any other kind of chemistry uh, happen here to make this leaving group leave, no carbocations. The chemistry that's going to happen is our adjacent lone pair of electrons on our heteroatom is going to facilitate its departure, generating in this case a protonated aldehyde. Okay, and now we're going to have a situation where we simply need to deprotonate this. in order to end up with our final aldehyde um, product. So again, pretty straightforward mechanism, just kind of highlighting some things that we saw before, right? We know that this guy is a very electrophilic intermediate. That's how we make aldehydes do chemistry with the alcohol, but that's how we would take this reaction in the forward direction. So a couple of things just to comment on, right? An, an important consideration that we have to think about here is protonation states. So sometimes students will have mechanisms that end up with intermediates that are not likely based on pH and pKa considerations. So unless otherwise stated, you probably consider um, pH being physiological pH. Again, pKa um, is going to be specific for that functional group. So one of the things I wanted to highlight here is just to kind of show a situation that's not likely. So just kind of highlighting here, we're gonna have our hemiacetal where we have protonated our alcohol to make it a good leaving group. Again, highlighting in a minute why this is not going to be a good mechanism. So sometimes what I'll see is students drawing a mechanism that looks like this. And here. So what we need to think about here is this is not likely to happen. I'm going to kind of comment on the two reasons why here. We need to think about pKa's. So we've got an alcohol is going to have a pKa of around 15 to 16. And then our protonated alcohol here is going to have a pKa that's less than zero. So again, the thought is, is if you are acidic or basic enough that you're going to deprotonate here, 
So if you can deprotonate here, you're also going to be able to do here. So we'll do here also. So again, uh, a good rule of thumb, just to kind of highlight here, good rule of thumb is to really think about your pH and pKa values. Again, if you're finding that you have both cationic and anionic species in your mechanism, really examine your pH and pKa. Well, I should say your pKa values. pH is going to stay the same, and so if you've got drastically different pKa values, you shouldn't be deprotonating one and not the other. Again, it's not to say that you won't have cationic and anionic species uh, in solution, right? Classic example is any amino acid, which are Zwitter ions, right? Where we're going to have the um, amine group be protonated, the carboxylic acid be deprotonated. But when we're considering these proton transfer events, generally we're going to see ourselves in either a neutral positive or a neutral negative scenario. That is, you're rarely going to sort of have both cationic and anionic species. So again, thinking about an application for this, see your notes from a reaction mechanism 10, uh, same biochemical application here. But what we're doing with this situation in taking a hemiacetal and converting it into the aldehyde, that has to do with the ring opening of sugars.